Um, so we're going to have a little fun during this session as well, and perhaps like a couple of surprises for our gentlemen um, as well. Um, I'd like to kick off with just um, to each of you, um, given that the, 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 the craft of journalism has evolved quite a bit in the last 10 years. Mm. Um, Mashable will be celebrating 10-year anniversary, I believe, next year. Digiday is probably the younger um, channel on this audience, and um, Ad Age is uh, the more mature um, channel um, it, <laughs> on this stage. So with that said, how, from your individual perspectives representing the brands that you um, are with, how has the journalism and the editorial, specifically as related to digital stories, evolved in the past decade or so? Mike, I would love to start with you. Last decade? Um, well, I mean, I think what's crushing, but also just a great opportunity, is that every story, you know, you know, every story is, there's almost an unlimited, you know, kind of options and opportunity to present it digitally. You know, you, you, you think about, well, um, you know, I don't think any of us think we're going to win, <laughs> win the internet with 500 word stories, right? So, I mean, is this, is this video? Is it sound? Is it, is it images? Is it visuals? You know, it, it's, you can almost not even start, you know, because there's so many different options. I, mean, I actually think Mashable's done more maybe than anybody in, in, in innovating the presentation of news. Um, but, you know, I think, um, I think there's just incredible opportunity out there. And, um, you know, it's incumbent on us to kind of imagine what this story can be and how, you know, how best to serve the reader. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a time, Michael, where the title of digital editor did not even exist. Well, news. you know, it shouldn't exist today. Hmm. Uh, you know, we, we at, it, 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 at age, you know, we don't really think of digital stories anymore. It's kind of silly. Um, you know, the, 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 the nomenclature exists on our site to give our readers a signal where some of this content is. Also, we have advertisers that want to sponsor that section. Um, but, but, but the truth is, um, you know, you know I, 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 my first kind of big business reporting job was at the Industry Standard. And, um, and then I went and, and spent some time at Variety, and I really learned the TV business. And to be honest, knowing the TV business is in a lot of ways more helpful to me in my job today. Um, because, you know, it, it's, you know, there's this giant collision taking place right now, and, um, you know, you know the, 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 this thing called TV is, is, is actually just the most valuable content in the world and the most, most powerful branding medium that, that, that has ever been devised, and it's just going to be delivered in a different way. Um, but, but understanding that has been, you know, pretty helpful to me. Great. Todd? Todd? Uh, yeah, I think um, when you said that, what I thought of instead of evolve was in some ways devolve, because um, I think there are, uh, there's not as much standards as there used to be. Um, you know, pretty much anything goes. If somebody tweets something, that could be a story. You know, um, I remember when um, Katy Perry unfriended Russell Brand, and someone said, you know, journalism 1820 to you know 2012 or whatever it was. Uh, so there's there's that kind of corresponding trend as well, um, where you you kind of wonder like, is this actually journalism, um, or is this kind of you know just kind of nitpicking, uh, navel gazing? Um, so I th I think that's sort of a, a corresponding trend, but at the same time, um, you're also getting things at lightning speed. You know, I, I always tell people at Mashable we don't write about what's going on today; we write about what's going on right now. You know, as you're sitting at your computer. Because um, that's that's really the niche. It's, you, people want to know as they log on what what, what exactly is breaking at this moment. Mm -hmm. um, and Mashable has, um, if I read this correctly, has um, the same number of social media followers as the New York Times. Mm -hmm. um, and clearly, the New York Times is over a century year old brand. brand. Mashable is just under ten years. How do you explain that kind of explosive growth? Why? Uh, I really think that uh, Pete Cashmore, like his one of his biggest innovations was just realizing what was going on in social media that was becoming a vehicle for people to spread um, uh, stories and news. And, um, you know, not everybody saw it the way he did back in 2006, 2007. And uh, they just got, a, got, a, got ahead of that trend. And, you know, I think it was crucial that uh, on Twitter, Mashable was one of the recommended, you know, uh, follows for a while. That was definitely a big help. So. Brian, um, so if anyone wants to ask uh, Brian a, a question about himself, um, at a moment, um, he has studied the art of pogonotrophy. <laughs> Does anyone know what, what pogonotrophy is? Ask Brian later. 
Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, Brian. Yeah, uh, so um, I don't think the craft of journalism hasn't changed uh, in, you know, in centuries. You're still gathering <coughs> information with the best sources you have uh, at your, uh, you know, at your dis at your disposal, and um, and and putting them through the ringer of fact checking and and all the all the actual you know traits of real journalism exist today just as they always have. It's gotten a lot faster, as as Todd says, and that does open up room for. Um, mistakes but yeah the toolkits are, are slightly different we can present it in different ways we can do it quicker but at the at the end of the day the core competency is, is not really changed mm -hmm. I don't think um, it's just speed and and new toys with mm -hmm. which to do it and does speed impact how much how many stories that you put out in um, a, a given morning or a given afternoon so compared to 10 years ago mm -hmm. Um, to, to just yesterday, I think, um, Todd, I saw four stories from you alone yesterday morning before 10.15. What kind of, what kind of rapid, what is the pace of that looking for you today compared to when you started out? <laughs> Brian or me? <laughs> Either one. Brian, yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously, um, the, the web is like, you know, it's insatiable. You know, it's not like uh, uh, I work for newspapers and print. I work for magazines. And, you know, you had a limited amount of space. Um, but there's no, there's no end to the uh, amount of stories you could write on the web. And there's no, really no downside to writing as many stories as you can because I find that um, you never really know what story is going to really catch on for whatever reason. So your odds are better if you put up more stories. Um, so uh, it, as regard to that, I think... Like anything else, there are busy days and there are slow days. There are some days where I'm just looking for something to write and there's nothing, and I'm calling people and emailing, nothing's going on. And other days where it's just you know it's coming at you like a Mack truck. So, mm -hmm. and just let me uh, just uh, add to that a little bit. I think um, you know there there actually can be a downside to doing too many stories, and that's what story did you not do? And I think you know you 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 obviously have to be able to churn things out and respond to things quickly, um, we decided, you know, we're just not going to necessarily cover what other people are covering because, you know what, we're not optimized for speed necessarily, certainly like these guys. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think you, you when, when people, you know, when, when, I, when I look sometimes at, 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 at some of our competition, not these guys, and I see, you know, lots of stories written elsewhere that they're committing staff time to do. Well, I'm thinking, well, what call didn't they make? What story didn't they break because they were too busy catching up with, you know, some other perceived competitor? I mean, w I, I think our readers read everything. I know they read Mashable. They're all over Mashable. They, they read Digiday. They read the Times. They read the Journal. Internet's a big newspaper. Um, you know, we try to keep to a minimum, um, y you know, re re reinventing the wheel, essentially. You know, there are obviously stories we need to be a big factor on. And there are stories invented elsewhere. We'll say, hey, check that out. That's a great story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So somewhat related to that, um, how do you, each of you, identify the value of breaking news, respective of your individual outlets? Does it carry the same premium <coughs> as it once did, given the 24-7 opportunity to churn a lot of stories? Or, or maybe it's immaterial now. It's... Yeah, um, for me, it's totally material. Mm -hmm. um, to us, the breaking story, the story we break, that and I'm not talking about a story that nobody wanted. You know, <laughs> you've got to break a story that people really want. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's breaking, there's exclusives, and then there are exclusives, right? So if you break a very meaningful story that is very valuable to a lot of people, that's, at that age, that's our only surefire hit, right? We can, we can have conceptual scoops. We can do the five reasons you need, you know, to... to uh, to, to have a drone strategy, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, occasionally those work for us, but for us, a breaking story is is kind of the only sure thing. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I know there's a lot of talk about like the end of the exclusive, and that's not important anymore. I totally disagree with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of most people who talk about, you know, that, that breaking news doesn't matter, don't break news. They're just better at something else. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to be good at breaking news. Okay. Todd, Brian, counter perspective, shared perspective. Uh, I would say that what what we what we strive to do because we're a much smaller uh, group is um, differentiate 
uh, we, you know, to Michael's point, we, we were not trying to be comprehensive. I think there's a real danger in trying to be comprehensive. And when it comes to breaking news, I think what we, <coughs> what we offer is, is uh, I hope we offer is a, is a, is a unique take, uh, a different perspective, uh, an analysis that may be either counterintuitive or something that's been left out of the discussion. Um, in, in terms of breaking a news uh, item, it, it really, there are so many different types of news you can break now, like in terms of whether it's a new hire or like today, Jill Abramson at the New York Times. You know, we're not going to dogpile on that because frankly, we have nothing to add and you're going to read it in 50 other websites. So we have no, no value to add there. Yeah. Um, but, um, but when it comes to something uh, where we can provide that insight and perspective, uh, that's that's where we can differentiate and and hopefully break news whether it's conceptually or actual new information. Uh, it's a goal. It's not the the overarching goal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just just to add to that. I mean, Jill Abramson. We have to dogpile on it. You know, a yeah. giant mm -hmm. company we cover. Um, but you know that puts us in a little bit of a bind because obviously we weren't first on it. Um, we we you know we we we. I I haven't seen our story as it is now, but I'm guessing we're we're not the most comprehensive on it. But we still have to, you know, stamp our authority on it, and it's, you know, it's just that's just sort of making the sausage in a way. You know, you get stories out there, everyone's got it. You know, the the the, the Dean Bouquet's talk today basically live streamed via Twitter. You know, and um, you know that's just one where where we do have to reinvent the wheel and just put an ad age, you know, kind of stamp on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we just we have different models, and I respect uh, the models these yeah. guys have as well. Um, but for us, like I mentioned, we have this great distribution system, so it makes more sense for us to kind of chase stories like that more often. Uh, and we're not the only ones, you know, Business Insider has a similar sort of take, you know, maybe BuzzFeed as well. Um, so it's, it's different, but we, in addition to doing that, we also do break stories, and you know, my, my philosophy is in the morning you chase those kind of things, and in the afternoon that's where you take more of an expansive look and do a news analysis, and work your sources or whatever. Um, so we try to find a balance, but we have a different different uh, take, so. Great, thank you. Um, quick speed round. <laughs> um, so as you know, your audience is um, a, a, a wonderful collection, ensemble of PR professionals, corporate communications professionals, marketing professionals. Um, if there was one word or a phrase that makes you cringe in a pitch, <laughs> what would that word or phrase be? Brian. Um, I'm drawing a blank on that one. Uh, either an exclusive or embargo in a pitch. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> um, Brian just said exclusives or embargoes. Mm -hmm. Exclusives or embargoes. Interesting. For me, it would be infographic. <laughs> 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 and, the, and the other one is... Love those <laughs> The other one is platform, because we get a lot of pitches for platforms, and we just are not a B2B publication. We get mm -hmm. them, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't have anything that's most annoying <laughs> about, about pitches. I want to be constructive. I mean, I, I think, you know, um, I, I, you know just, just keeping in mind that, that we get lots of them, right? And, um, you know, if, 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 we don't, if we don't respond, it doesn't mean you shouldn't follow up, but... Definitely don't, no phone calls, but you know, just email again is is useful. Um, yeah, and obviously, you know, um, I don't know about you guys, but our, our our philosophy on embargoes is just we just don't do them. Yeah. And if and if we did if we did participate in one, we would need to know because because that's basically participating in a in a strategy, yeah. right? right? So so we would need to know well, okay, who who else is involved? Uh, wh what information will they have? So, so we know what value we'll get out of it in the end, and in, in, in most cases, it's, it's not worth the trouble. So, okay. yeah. um, so I, <laughs> I want to just um, redirect the conversation to um, your personal and professional brands in social media. I did a, a pretty extensive scrub of your, um, your very first tweet in a belated um, eighth year anniversary of Twitter, <laughs> as well as your most recent tweets. And, and uh, for the record, I too have put on two belts and didn't know it. <laughs> Todd tweeted that. Is that me. your tweet? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, and Todd's very first tweet is going to lunch, yeah, if, I, if, I, if I recall. Proud of that. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I, I, could, I could go for that. Um, so how do each, because each of you have um, a very extensive following, um, how do you use your social media 
personality and your tone and your words as related to your personal um, uh, agenda versus your professional brand? Do you, do you distinct? Is there a distinction between the two? Um, well, for me, okay, when I started at Mashable, I immediately got like 1,000 or 2,000 followers like overnight. Um, and I, what I started doing was putting up all the stories I wrote. You know, here's a headline. And a lot of people were just like, we don't, we're not going to follow you if that's all you're going to do. We already, you already follow the Mashable feed. We don't need that. So uh, I stopped doing that, and I started, you know, just kind of riffing on things and offering thoughts, whether they're interesting or not, and a lot of puns. And mm -hmm. that's, that's become my thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I just want to apologize for my first tweet. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> well, I saw it. It was just <laughs> terrible. I mean, it was like, oh, I think I'll just shill a story now <laughs> to my zero followers, you know. <laughs> this is horrible stuff. I think I've gotten better over time, you know. Um, I, I mean, I assume that my Twitter following are people in the business or people who are interested in what I'm doing professionally. I don't mind. I do share, you know, a lot of the people in the business are my friends as well, so um, including other reporters. So I, I have fun with Twitter. I like to share things that I'm doing sometimes. Um, but, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say, like, you know, big soccer fan. I won't overload with, like, World Cup tweets because you know, mm -hmm. I realize that obsession's not shared by, by everybody. Uh, but I, I think of it as a, as a you know, I, I, am, I am in a lot of ways my, what I do for a living and mm -hmm. uh, kind of present a, a combination of me and, and, and the business. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I think my, my career such as it has been, has been all over the map, and I think that's reflected in my uh, Twitter feed. It's, I, I use it a lot to make jokes, mm -hmm. mostly. I don't, uh, I sort of cringe at the idea of a personal brand. Mm -hmm. That's a cringe uh, trigger for me. Um, I, I'll tweet stories that I've written if I'm like particularly either proud of them or, or, or <laughs> think that they're interesting. I, don't, I, I certainly don't tweet every story I write, and I, I tweet more often to other stories, more other things, curiosities. It's sort of a scrapbook and a random, you know, uh, Stephen Wright, Mitch Hedberg style mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you ever um, accept pitches through? Not really. I, yeah. I really don't yeah. like that, yeah. You, you I don't feel, it feels like you're being accosted in public or something. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, do you ever accept? No, I mean, um, email's great medium for that stuff. Um, you know, I think LinkedIn and, you know, to me, if I get something on LinkedIn or, or, or Twitter, I think, God, can they just like look for the, I mean, my email address is published, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not secret, mm -hmm. you know, um, it just feels like, okay, so there was just absolutely like no thought. In so the preference is no. Is, yeah. is it just, it seems like the wrong, the wrong yeah. way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, it's not the forum. It's not the forum. Okay. So we're going to do a quick speed round number two. Um, looking into your crystal ball in sequential order of when you think this will ha will appear as a headline. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. You don't have to put any times against it, but in the sequence of order. Fresh direct trucks replaced with fresh direct drones. Game of Thrones will be available via Amazon Prime. Publicist group and Omnicom reignite merger discussions. <laughs> <laughs> in order. In order of... Most first to last. Uh, yeah, uh, Game of Thrones, Fresh Direct, Publicis on the phone. That's mm -hmm. safe. I would go with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Game of Thrones definitely next year. Amazon will get it. You know, they'll write a big check. Okay. Um, yeah. So that'll probably happen first. Um, so um, we had uh, did some preliminary discussions regarding um, what were some of the best pitches that you have ever received versus some of the um, not so fantastic pitches that you have received. If you had to anecdotally give some counsel or advice to this audience, um, what, wh when they reach out to you via email, what, what should be the first sentence? Like what, what is a perfect first sentence that makes you want to read the next one? And it could be, and it, it, it could be Hi, or no exclamation marks. I personally don't like to use exclamation marks ever. But hi, how are you? Yeah. So, what, is there, or do you remember in recent history, like, wow, that, that was a pretty decent, okay, I could be I, interested. I tell you, right on. I really appreciate email that doesn't require I dig through things. Mm -hmm. 
Like they grow I, things. <laughs> yes. So That's so long. if if uh, I've noticed that the the longer the preamble, the less valuable the nugget of information I'm being offered. Mm -hmm. So um, you know if if there's a way to sort of just get to it right right at the outset, you know what we're I don't need you to explain the significance of it. You know, just tell me what it is, right? We're in the we're in this business of um, of, of trading information, you know, and that's value. And if you have value you want to offer, you know, I'm very very interested to read and hear about it. But um, you know, it, you have to have something, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's that's kind of that, that, that's the that's the that's that's the challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I've said that many times. If you know. Why, oh, why I'm getting these pictures that are like this long? I'm never gonna I'm never gonna read through them. Um, but regard with your first sentence, a great one would be you. You'll pr chances are you'll think this is boring, but <laughs> I disagree or something. You know, something that's honest. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of cuts through the pretense. Yeah, like a self. I always like a self-deprecating person, sense of humor, um, honest. The thing that that um, sort of drives me nuts that happens a lot, um, and uh, I would caution against is. The day that, say, I, I post a story, I get a pitch that's like, I have a terrific source for the story you just yeah. wrote. Because that I you already wrote. It's, it's done. Out okay. It's out mm -hmm. there. Like, please. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a really desperate. <laughs> yeah, but it's daily. Strategy. It's yeah. daily. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. Um, I just wanted to do a quick time check. Am I still? I'm good? OK. Yeah. A couple more minutes? OK, great. OK. Um, this is maybe an uncomfortable question for the audience um, and, and, and for this, but um, there was um, a, a top ten list that was uh, published in um, one of the outlets represented on this stage last year. And it was um, <laughs> the most annoying um, roles in media and wow. advertising. Funny, right? Um, it, it, that may not be the right language, but regardless, it's not a list you want to be on. It's not a list you want to be on. And, um, and, it, it, and it cited everything from kind of um, the, the, um, the account planner to the, um, the entitled creative. And 10 was the PR professional. And I know that's not shared um, on this stage. <coughs> um, is there, there have been moments, and certainly I'll be honest, um, in, in my career where I've worked with certain journalists who prefer to go direct to source. They don't need to go through a, a PR professional. Um, and that, that, that's been more of an exception than the norm. But what advice can you give this group in terms of how we can provide greater value to you to help you do your job better? Um, so, so. Oh, that was a heavy one, right? Yes. Yeah, so, Does mm. this require a beer? Mm -hmm. Would you like it, to drink? Yeah. You, you, you promised. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did yeah. promise, but someone um, know. You know, um, I think the power of an introduction is really great. Um, I think, you know, I'll tell you, I don't get enough agency pitches, right? I need to know what's, I don't need to know the big stories at agencies. Um, you know, there's, the space I, we cover is, you know, this world is transforming really fast. Agencies are, you know, in the middle of it and having to adapt quickly. Um, you know, I'd love, to, I'd love to be introduced to people. I'd love to have meetings with people, lunches, drinks. You know, I, I need to know what's going on in the agency world. And I don't feel like I get many pitches, to be honest, out of agencies. And when I do get them, they're about a campaign. And I can't really do anything about that because it's not really what I cover, right? So, um, you know... Big stories, you know, what tectonically is happening in the agency world? Uh, I think, you know, publicist Omnicom, you know, I, I mean, the, why were they trying to merge? I don't think anyone really understands, you know, and, you know, no client wanted it, but clearly there was, you know, a real economic reason to go through that or try to. And um, so, you know, I'd love to understand the world better. Hmm, thank you. Yeah, r relationship building, like not necessarily a, a, a pitch, for a story that needs to be up by the end of the week, but sort of a more long-term, mm -hmm. uh, to, to your point, <laughs> like I want to know the mm -hmm. deeper, uh, the, the, you know, the, the what, what's happening under the surface, and mm -hmm. in order to do that, you need to cultivate relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, order, in order to do that, you need access. Uh, I would say honesty, because uh, a lot of times you get a pitch and they withhold information, like, um, and I have to do a Google search to find out that it was someone else who picked it up, like, you know, a, hours or day before, 
or they're just with, withholding very important information with the hopes that I'll just jump into the story anyway. And uh, I find that happens a lot for some reason. Oh, really? And you have to kind of beat it out of people, you know, and just mm -hmm. cut through that and just tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would love to open it up to any questions. <coughs> the gentleman in the back. At Karate, C-R-O-T-T-Y, uh, on Twitter. But I write about uh, education for Forbes, and I write about politics, uh, culture, and whatever the heck I want for HuffPo since they don't pay. Um, but uh, <laughs> there's a couple things. These are more the way the comments, but I'd like you guys to comment on them. One of the things I find is publicists, um, they, they go on about their, the company they're representing and how great it is. And, and I tend to not respond to uh, pitches about a specific company because we're not in the business of you know, making that company famous. So publicists uh, do much better when there's like the word study or report in the headline. So that is they're like talking about some trend and then if the client can fit into the trend in some way, then I might mention that in some way. So that's one thing I've noticed. And the other thing that publicists don't do enough of is follow me. Like they don't follow me on Twitter, they don't follow me on Facebook, they've not actually read the column, so they don't even know the particular angle I'm taking on the subject. So that, that's something that I think is advice, but I'd also like to hear what people, what the, call, what the panelists have to say about it. Uh, okay, okay. So, I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to, uh, the question is, is a question to the panelists or a response from the panelists about um, one agency pitches or a pitch has to be informed based on you should at, at minimum follow the report to understand what kind of coverage he or she has already put into the market? Okay. Uh, I think a uh, yeah, general understanding of what we have covered and what we tend to cover is, is useful. I don't care if you follow me on Twitter. Um, uh, and, and it certainly creeps me out when you bring up personal information in a pitch. Um, mm. uh, <laughs> please don't do that. <laughs> um, no creepiness. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and studies are great, but there's always an agenda behind them. Uh, it depends on who conducted it, why, what it's about. Uh, I'm very wary of... of studies, um, de depending on who conducts. I think there's never been more shit research yeah. in the marketplace today. Yeah. I mean, it is an epidemic. It's got to be stamped out. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's, you it's, know, a, can it's who, a cancer. Who commissioned the study? Why? Yeah. And oh, gee, the findings are... Uh, Facebook ads are great. It's a company that sells Facebook ads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. not, I sort of glaze over. Okay, great. Also, I mean, you, you did mention it, you know, um, pitches where it, it only, you know, you know, it's like, a single thing is happening within one company that actually not a lot of people care about. That's tough for us, you know, and uh, it's it's not a good story. And you know, so so we actually need just bigger bigger ideas, mm -hmm. okay. news that impacts people outside the uh, you know the affected uh, entity. I think someone's got to defend all the uh, PR folks in the room. <laughs> um, Strong tweeting, by the way, everybody. Mm -hmm. I think his comment was fine, and I think there are a lot of journalists that think that, which is, and many of the complaints are younger publicists have not read, are not following journalists, and I think that that is, whether they're young or old, a good comment. But there has to be a little bit more communication, not only between those that are in media, those that are within the, the publicists or PR world, and those that are journalists. Here's my response back. You should still take that report or that study or that official press release and let them know, I know this is your view. I'm going to do some excellent investigative work and look at every angle on this so it's in your best interest to tell me more, not less, and you'll be less believable if I've got to come back. Anyone that's not prepared for that, including that young person, should be warned. But this is the kind of stuff that calls me in sometimes for crisis situations, even with dealing with with the media, it's our job, it's on us to educate you more about what we're doing. And you should be asking us tough, tough questions, but not everyone's like that. Yes. Uh, I have a quick question. Um, you were talking earlier about access and introductions. How often do you guys go and go to agencies and do agency visits? Is that something that you prioritize? Not, not enough. You're open you to do it more. 
Yeah, we have uh, reporters who, who would do that more. Yeah, uh, and we, we should do more of that, for sure. We don't really, I mean, the advertising industry is one of many industries we cover, so we don't yeah. focus on it as much. Mm -hmm. And I, I will say, like, almost every good story that I've, I've sort of walked away with has come from just going out for drinks, and it's usually, like, third beer in, fourth, you know, offhand comment. You're like, oh, that's a yeah. story. I have, I have a okay. Um, Lynn, how important oh. would you find it to be for um, agencies, leaders to be active on social media? Like, would that make that you more likely to consider them as an expert source, or make you wonder if they have a day job? I think I think you use the the social channels that fit with your life. I think there's nothing worse than a forced presence anywhere. You know, you should do what you know works for you, um, but. I mean, I think all of us see, you know, these fake sort of <laughs> executive accounts that are just horrible stuff, you know? <laughs> and I don't think add a ton of value. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, this is for any of you. What was one of your favorite stories and where did it, where did the source come from? <laughs> don't all answer at once. <laughs> well, I'll... Um, a few years ago, um, we got a document that showed basically all of Google's advertisers, right? And it was an amazing look into this black box, you know, and, and who's spending big there. And uh, that was, to me, like just Christmas in July or whenever it was, you know, to get something like that is very precious. But that was a confidential tip. Michael, a source yeah. that you yeah. coincidentally stumbled upon. Got it. Okay. Um, I, I'd just say, from Asheville, recently we did a story on when Heartbleed came out. We did like a list of, uh, we, we had a bunch of reporters on a list of all the affected sites and you know where you had to change your password. And it was just a phenomenal hit. It really connected with our audience. So. Yeah, I, I since, since joining Digiday, I've done more editing than writing, frankly. Um, and I, you know, I think it's a, it's, it's a total bullshit answer, but like I always say my favorite story is the next one. <laughs> so I, I don't have a favorite. All right, well, I've gotten a couple of nods from the audience that uh, our time is nigh. And look, the bar is open because I got mm -hmm. the first beer. So thank you guys. Thank you thank so much you. for that. Thank Bill, you. thank you thank for... You.